Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Deliver from evil, movie, thoughts. So I want to start with the, the climax. I'm not usually... I wouldn't think that I would be, you know, excited by an exorcism, but that was amazing. Excuse me, it just kept building and, excuse me, throwing new things and just, I mean, it's like, okay, enclosed space, they've got him right there, they've, they've handcuffed him, you've got the priest there, you've got, you know, Sarchi has his orders. What could go wrong? This is this is gonna go exactly the way, and it just keeps going wrong in so many different ways. And it's like, I mean, it is hard to do a proper like fight face down kind of thing in a horror movie. It it. It can become sort of action y really fast and really, you know, and that's that's not really what you want. You don't want to, you know, the, the, the bad guy should still be scary. He shouldn't just be like a boss fight, you know. And they manage it here, they, they do it so well. It's, yeah, I mean, just. Just the exorcism alone is <laughs> almost by itself worth watching a movie for. Now, I like the the sort of continued the. I'm gonna go with just Ramirez. I think that's the the actor is Edgar Ramirez, maybe something like that. Until I recall his actual name, I'm going to go with Father Ramirez and Sarchi. They keep getting, like, bitten and stabbed and this kind of thing by the possessed. There's this sort of feral, animalistic, yeah, feel to the, you know, the, the possessed in this. They... Yeah, you know, claws and fangs, and yeah, they're they're dangerous to get close to. Now, I like how the I think it was called Santino. He looks very similar to Sarcher, and there's this. You know, when when the two are, you know, once you know that Santino is possessed and you see them you know it has this sort of thing of like evil twin kind of feel where it's like Santino is what Ralph could be you know if he if he gave in if he didn't you know keep from indulging in this bonds and uh, you know I'm not saying that it's you know, it's not that Santino was just such a horrible person that, no, it's because he happened upon, you know, I mean, that's, that's where it gets more just straight supernatural rather than necessarily entirely psychological. Basically, the first person to read the, the text becomes possessed and, you know, he writes it a different place and one person gets possessed, he writes it another place, another person gets possessed. So it's not that Ralph almost was Santino, but nevertheless, if Santino managed to, 
you know, convert Ralph, then Ralph would be, yeah. And it's this thing of, you know, he, he has a family, he has people to protect, and this notion that he could be the, you know, this awful destructive force is really terrifying. You know, there's, it's always good when the, the, the villain or the, the, you know, whatever it is that we're fearing, when that has a direct correlation or contrast of some sort to the, you know, the, the protagonist or, yeah. I really like the way, the, the whole thing with the cats, where, you know, you've got this one, you know, early on he says, you know, I really hate cats, and then, you know, I, th I think it was first the lions, and then they were in the apartment, but, yeah, you know, he says, you know, really hate cats, suddenly he's facing a freaking lion, you know, and not just one, there's like maybe three there, and it's just, okay, get me out of here, and just, yeah, that was, and and then after that, you know, he's moving, you know, what's wrong with that cat? It's a cat. That's what's wrong with it, you know, and and he slams the door and goes, that's really funny. That's a great way to take this really tense moment and yeah, give us some, give us something to laugh at, make us less tense than we just were, you know, and yeah, this movie does great at that, it's like when they're, you know, okay, there's definitely something wrong here with this table, with this, that's like a, I don't remember exactly what it was, but it, the, the table looked like it was completely straight, and this thing just kept tipping just slightly, and then, you know, butlers circling around, and then they hear a loud pop of some sort, and then, oh, it's a rat that went into a rat trap. And, you know, it's like, you want to read it its rights or shoot it or, you know, and, and Butler walks up, and it's just, that's really funny. The, the you know, yeah, he, like, flips off Sarchi and, yeah. Yeah. I also think the the way they did the whole thing with oh actually I should get after that then you have this thing of you know so you you're thinking that, oh it was just one of those dumb jump scares with oh, it was just a cat you know nope then he comes upon just this vicious guard dog and they look up crucified cat you know creationist cat. And it's, yeah, it's it's this thing of, you know, for a second there you thought, oh, it was just cheap, forgettable jumps. Because nothing is more obvious of a cheap, forgettable jump scare than the freaking cat that just ran around and then, okay, never mind. That could have literally been cut entirely out of the movie and it would have made no difference. Not so here, it just builds up to the actual, you know, payoff scare kind of things, so, yeah. Now, the yeah, the thing about you know the, the radar and you know I thought that was pretty well done. You know, I didn't think about you know it didn't occur to me right away that it would be, you know, he he's extra, you know, ESP, I think is what it's called. And you know, because of that, he's now also seeing things and hearing things where, excuse me, where others aren't. Excuse me, where it's like Jungler is, you know, communicating with him. And, and I mean, that is just... When, when he's watching the, the, the footage, and it's like, we're already watching the, the you know, Santini, I'm, I think I'm, I keep 
going back and forth between Santini and Santino, one of those, you know, possessed guy. We're already watching him on the tape, and then suddenly get, you know, a flash where he's looking directly at it and just, yeah. And it's also just, I don't know what it is about it, but somehow the image of Santini with, with the face and the, the chest with the, you know, that's horrifying. That is, that is, I mean, I keep seeing that when, you know, the, the tiniest sliver of darkness that I, I mean, pity me once I turn this video off. I'm going to have to turn off these lights and try to get some semblance of sleep. And it's, yeah, it's like with Sinister, he just Derrickson creates these relatively simple little looks that are just insanely creepy and really haunt you. I mean, when you just stop to think about it, it's not actually that, you know, it's got some some scarring going on and, you know, relatively fresh wounds are like red from the blood. I mean, for example, Freddy Krueger, okay, you know, melted kind of face, that's terrifying. But but this, you know, yeah, you, you wouldn't think that that, you know, Freddy was terrifying. I mean, once you watch past, like, the first two movies or, you know, other than your nightmare, then not so much scary, but yeah, it's just and and I noticed that he he put the 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 you know it's like every time he he writes the the spell the incantation on a wall, one person sees it gets taken over, at least as far as I perceive the rules. He put it on his chest. Does that mean that the first person who saw it on his chest got taken over? And then he, you know, maybe he just needs to wash that over with some nice white paint, too. Maybe that's what his buddy was trying to do when he drank paint thinner, which I actually think kind of explains the, the gory, nasty thing that happened. Was like his, his stomach started spilling open or something. Maybe that's what happens when you drink what was it, two liters of paint thinner? I don't know enough about it to, to say, but maybe. I mean, it's not like he just, you know, if yeah, if it was just like literal, he, you know, he, he just choked to death or he drowned, okay, you know, that's nothing that, you know, detailed, disgustingly, and visual is going to happen, but yeah, it's possible for me. From this now, and you know, there, there's that bit near the end where you know Santini, you know, they're they're trying to exercise the demons, and you know he like you know bends down and takes like a bite of I think it's like his shin or something, and it's just oh honey, that's gonna go right to your thighs. The I quite like the, the the this whole idea of infection of evil, where the you know Santini is going around recruiting for for Jungler, and as far as I understood, basically Jungler controls all of them, and it's just sort of the 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 host of Jungler is Santini, so it's only by exercising the demon from him that they can completely rid the others, you know. For example, Jane, you know, she broke out of jail and then she just suicided. That was, I, I feel like that, I don't know, I'm not sure if that was maybe a little bit of a waste of a character or I guess it showed to Ralph just how how much control 
Santini had, or Jungler had, over the possessed. Now, the, this made great use of basements. Very, very scary and creepy basements, yeah. Now, the way I see it, the reason the, you know, the, that Ralph's family was targeted was that Santini was hoping to recruit Ralph because it's, it's the, you know, yeah, it's, it's the, the Galactic Empire thing, you know, do we just kill this powerful warrior or do we try to bring him over to our side? And, yeah, I mean, he, he's one of the greatest threats to Jungler because of the ESP and because of how relentless he is. You know, a lot of people are going to give up from these things or possibly just not see, you know, th these other guys were saying, well, this person is clearly crazy. This, this doesn't make any sense. And, you know, Ralph is like, you know what, this actually, okay, I'll, I'll go check it out. So, yeah, you know, this would have gone, not much would have happened if not for someone like Ralph. And, yeah, so basically by gradually threatening the family, it might make him, you know, more prone to give in, and it's it's again it's that thing of you know if if I am more powerful then I don't have to worry about the you know yeah but once he lapses that might be enough for the you know for jungler to take hold and yeah. And, you know, we, we do see that it's a decided, you know, the, the way it keeps appearing by the girl, you know, she keeps hearing the scratching noises. And it's night after night. It's like three separate nights at least. And, and these are when Ralph isn't around. So it's not, you know, it's not something that could sort of, you know, it, it, it only affects him by the way to f the way what affects her affects him. It's, you know, it's not like when Jung, when Santi flashes his face on, you know, the, the, the video, you know, the monitor, and when he hears the, the sounds from, you know, that day that he also flashes back to. Now... The... I suppose that... I... I think the ending was fairly fitting. I did, It wasn't necessarily the strongest, but from this whole thing of, you know, Ralph has these, you know, hints, the, the radar, as Butler calls it, and gradually, over the course of it, he, he comes to more be comfortable with it as some sort of, you know, as something that could maybe help in the supernatural and that the supernatural is real and needs, you know, warriors. In, in that sense, it very much makes sense that, yeah, he, he goes, he, he joins with the, the priest. And I love how Derrickson, I mean, we almost know, I mean, he's, he's not going to kill the family. He, he can't kill the family because it really does look like 
things are more or less going to be better. You know, I mean, they're 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 getting rid of this demon. You know, they they did the exorcism. Okay, they get the location. Okay, they just need to get them. And it's like you know, trying to open this place, trying to open. There's a lock here, and snapping over, and he runs over, and they're like holding him back, and just, you know, darkness for a few seconds, and then they come out. You know, it's just keep milking every single solitary second he can. Of. I mean, if he just wanted, if he wanted to, he could have cut right from you know finding out the location of Santini, you know, a second or two. And then they, you know, go and hug and, but nope, he's every single little solitary drop of tension that can be, you know, wrought and grinded is, yes. Now the, I suppose, I did quite like the way the, you know, the, the exorcism, I mean, not only did it include Ralph's, you know, personal background kind of thing, but it also brought in the priests, and it's, on paper, this shouldn't work. It was just, it was a short conversation, it was a good conversation, it was a bonding moment, it was a good character moment, but we just heard about this. It, it wasn't something that we spent a lot of time on, but it brings back, you know, oh, you have a son, she hid it from you, and it's this thing of, it, it works, it really works, it just, yeah, fantastic stuff there. And that is, of course, also the scene where, the, you know, break on through really kicks in, and it's this thing where I feel like this should really take me out of it, but it doesn't quite. I, I mean, I'm lucky. I'm, you know, clearly I'm more comfortable with the music of The Doors than Sarchi is. Now, I don't, I'm not going to make this, you know, the, I don't want to be the annoying atheist who brings up, like, problems with, this movie isn't aggressive against atheists, so I don't have a problem with it. I, I don't believe in it in a, you know, yeah, I, I don't believe in it, but I do just want to point out that some of the arguments made here for faith are not very good ones, and they've been rebutted many times. I just, I didn't expect it to talk me into it. But I also didn't, I didn't think it needed to try. And when you try, you should probably try harder, is, is basically what I'm, what I'm getting at. Now, I think that pretty well covers it. I think that... The basic, the basic idea could have been a lot sillier if not handled as well as it was. You know, this this overall concept, I mean, that's, that's where it gets very fantasy-ish, this thing of Jungler wants to recruit as many different people as possible. You know, it's this sort of thing of if, if you haven't drunk the Kool-Aid, that's really difficult to get into. That's, you know, yeah, if, if you're not already into this idea of, you know, fantasy creatures and they, you know, take over and talk into, because this isn't one of these more subtle 
approaches to where you know we don't know exactly what it necessarily wants. No, it it's a demon. It wants to recruit people, and it's trying to recruit recruit as many as it can as fast as it can. That's that really should seem really silly. It, especially to someone like me who really doesn't... I mean, if we're at least talking like a viral, you know, zombie, some kind of thing like that, you know, but but the moment you're talking the, you know, straight up spiritual, supernatural, demonic, that's kind of where I... <laughs> but... It's done so well that I'm actually really engaged and excited for it. So, yeah, I guess just in closing, overall, I think Sinister is sort of this, I don't know if timeless is the word, but it's it's sort of this tale that it's, it's very carefully put together, very very self-contained to where it's just this, yeah, it's, it's almost a cautionary tale. It's, it's almost something that could have been on The Outer Limits of Twilight Zone. Actually, I haven't watched all the episodes. Maybe they have done stories very similar to that, but yeah, it's, it's that kind of thing where this one is a bit more of a, you know, not saying that either is Bad for what they are. This one is more, I guess, more of a straight horror exorcism kind of thing. Yeah, and again, I, I don't think it was bad that this didn't. You know, I'm not saying this should have ended in tragedy. I don't think that would have really you know, gelled with the rest of the film. It's not really, this is headed for strategy. I mean, it's not that, you know, from the moment you sit down, you can tell, you know, the family will be okay. But as it progresses, you can kind of tell this is, this is not a story of, you know, tragic loss and falling. It's a story of redemption. It is that they... You know, I mean, Sarchi owns up to having, you know, beaten Marvin to death. You know, kept pounding until all he was doing was, you know, hammering yellow chunks of bone into the floorboards. Right. And after that, he, you know, yeah, he, he faces, he stares it down faces it and overcomes it and helps, def you know, defeat a demon all in a day's work. It's, yeah, it's that kind of story. And that, you know, there isn't really any, you know, when, when you look back over this, it's not that it was building towards something else. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very glad that it ended the way it did. It, it fit very much. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.